Oh, welcome back to uh, NixOS Adventures, we're calling this now. I guess I've called it that from the start. I just haven't ever said it out loud. Um, spawned from the NixOS Challenge. I guess I could take these headphones off now. From Jupiter Broadcast. Big shout out there. Um, also, the NixOS community as a whole is like super cool, super inviting, um, and also... Um, Still not very well documented, unfortunately, but we're, we're getting past that. I think it's much more uh, documented now than it used to be. And those of you who know me well will have noticed that I've grown kind of a Linux beard. Started, started to grow the Linux beard back out as I've been playing with Linux OS. Uh, that needs to be shaved probably, but uh, yeah, I, those of you who've known me a long time, I used to have the, the big beard. Uh, which this year I've I've shaved and uh, kept I've kept it clean shaven until I've pl started playing with Nick's. So that might say that might speak so something somewhat to uh, to how uh, all encompassing Nick's has become for my life. Uh, it's like uh, I'm reading all this documentation. I'm watching these videos. I've actually stopped watching videos uh, so much because they're less and less helpful. Uh, as you go through all of the good content, right, you're left with. Um, a lesser good content content nonetheless but um, stuff that you can just read through documentation and gather uh, stuff that's probably a little out of date by now especially when it comes to like uh, Nick's flakes and stuff which we're going to talk about uh, one moment I have a ton of notes written I don't even really want to jump in here yet I do want to just kind of show uh, the configurations so I've only done the uh, the four configurations um, yeah, I think we've only done two, maybe, uh, on stream, and then I did something and quickly did something else off stream, um, just playing with stuff because I got excited about the Vim, uh, plugins, uh, at the very end of last stream. I was just playing with stuff, and then I actually rolled back to configuration two. Pretty sure that's how that worked. Um, maybe it's not. I did a rollback, um, I listed the generations on Nix which I will also show off, hopefully. Um, this operating system has built-in rollback states. So at any given time, you make a mistake, which, you know, it's just, maybe you've added something to the environment somehow that um, you just want to roll back from, or, I don't know. I don't know what it might be for you. But yeah, there's like built-in rollbacks, uh, and they're called atomic rollbacks or whatever. Um, and I guess all that means by atomic is that they're, um, like they their their operation that hardly takes up any, um, uh, like CPU or resources in general, that kind of stuff. Uh, so last couple streams, I actually installed NixOS on both streams. This stream we're actually just going to go ahead and use the one that I installed the second time because it gave us a working plasma environment. And I, I think now that I look back, the first time I tried to install Plasma, um, there might have been a problem with VirtualBox. I actually got that black screen problem from the first stream yesterday on this uh, machine that we've all seen boot plenty of times, reboot just fine, build and, and all that. Um, and I was, I was like, well, that can't, it can't just be corrupt. That's just silly. Like, let me, let me work on this. The grub booted, right? There was just a problem getting into the KDE environment. So I rebooted, um, actually completely rebooted the machine at that point, um, the host machine, my uh, desktop PC. And yeah, so it and then it just ran again. Um, that's probably a Windows problem. Uh, that's probably my problem since I'm running Windows. <laughs> I mean, forgive me, but at least I'm playing with NixOS right now. Uh, I, I've, I've come a long way since... Uh, Installing Arch Linux uh, ten years ago, so at least I've I've got some skin in the game. Uh, but NixOS is a whole new beast, so I hope we can maybe put all the um like the questions that I've kind of had, um, and I've been kind of bouncing off uh you know this broadcast here um into into kind of more action today so i have my notes are up on the left uh, i'm in the virtual box see 
So we've uh, created the root boot, right? We've done all that stuff. Uh, format uh, partitions. I said that weird. Formatted partitions. Um, we've configured our operating system with a super user. We've installed Plasma Home Manager. We've actually ended up configuring Vim. Um, and then there's some more stuff down there that we didn't get to. And honestly, I don't think we're going to get to them. Um, we're just going to push those aside for now to learn more about Flakes. Flakes are an experimental feature of NixOS um, that is just like all the rage apparently. And it seems like everybody's using them in production, even though they're experimental, which, you know, you see that a lot. Um, <laughs> more often than we should probably, but we, we see that a lot. Uh, and basically I have, um, I, maybe I should have pulled these up. Ooh, 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 ooh. Oh, that's going to be kind of hard to do. I could um, pull pull maybe these these uh, notes up after a while. Hmm. You just just have pulled these up. I thought I had more here. I think they're not loading. So I'm using a um, Markdown viewer for Visual Studio Code that I'm just now realizing that I could put as a window because it just uses like um, basically the same thing that Chrome uses to to show windows I could just show that on the screen but it would be really messy it's not set up for this scene but I might I might um, I might take a small break here and figure out that exact issue See if I can't do that um, but yeah I, I really want to take tonight and just go over what I what I think so far first and foremost because this is wild um, in a good way um, and also what I've got what I, what I think it boils down to in terms of um, like boilerplate I would say in comparison to arch because you're you're given the same minimal system as Arch or uh, Slackware or Gentoo, right? You're given that same minimal environment that you're expected to just know what you want out of it and then go from there. But the difference, and I can only speak to Arch, right? The difference between Nix and Arch is um, is is the pack is 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 Pac-Man versus um, the like the Nix. Nix, the, the, the package manager, Nix, the package manager. Uh, the difference in uh, Pac-Man and the AUR especially. Uh, so Pac-Man is really good at, um, as that like, you can change things. Like you can get, you get the like, the pack, I can't remember what it's called, but it's like, a, it's kind of like a make file of sorts, right? And you can kind of, you can kind of change your parameters in there. Um, and the Arch user repository has all these things that um, are hosted, like basically maintained, but hosted in a central location and maintained by people in the community, um, making sure that it all works in Arch. Nix is very similar, right, in that way, but they just can point directly at a tar.gz file on GitHub as their like source for their like Ubuntu style repository, which they call channels. As far as I aware I'm aware, that's like the the comparisons that I can can draw uh, to how Nix handles packages. And the thing that no package manager, um, as, from as far as I'm aware uh, that I've used yet, right, has uh, like built-in rollbacks, like Nix does. And it in the way Nix handles packages, it it allows you not to have to worry about how the operating system uh, handles those packages. Like you just have to declare the the packages be run, um, and that that the Nix will just figure it out. And then if you have to write extra config, you can basically override and add configuration files um, into the config itself, and then. Where I'm at is like I need 
to install Nginx. <laughs> right? I need to install Nginx easy. Easy peasy. Like it's like two lines or something. But I also need the RTMP module, which is like also like not too bad. It's a couple more lines. But then I need to append the HTTP, um, so like the server config, right? Which is not so bad if I just knew, like I could just go in there and write it. Um, but knowing how all that works under the hood is is vital for me, coming coming from like an environment where I can just actually go like like SCP into the like SFTP into the environment and change a, a file on the fly from the Etsy folder. That's just you know a static file that I can just change and reboot the the uh, system CTL, and it works. Um, it's a totally different environment where. Nix expects you to, if you make a change, you save that change to the operating system, and the operating system needs to be rebuilt before it's uh, it's effectively able to be used. But in doing so, you're preventing yourself from ever taking a step without a step back. Um, and that's what's nice. So if you subscribe to the the repo or the channel, so to say, the the Nix channel the unstable channel so as far as i can tell you are ble as bleeding edge as arch um can be and it just comes down to like the maintainers of the packages to keep them up to date um uh, and then unlike arch where arch is like if you up <laughs> like if you update your zfs array um or your plex server or whatever it comes down to it could break and you might have to take a step back and if you didn't have like a a safeguard for like the thing that was supposed to keep you in line your zfs array right if you don't have a safeguard for that then i mean good luck so nix might be the answer to some problems that like a lot of people are having with um you know like a, a configuration that's like kind of faulty after a while it uh, seems like this is maybe the way to solve that. It's always a kind of a fresh configuration every time you boot the system, which we're going to see finally, hopefully. I've just been rambling about Nix and my my thoughts on it for so far, but um, we do need to go ahead and boot this because it's because time is getting away from me. <clears throat> uh, so so far, what we've done is we've gotten Plasma Desktop running. I have 20 gigabytes of uh, of storage here, and that I partitioned out into 12 gigabytes of root, 8 gigabytes of Linux swap. Um, the config was generated pretty much uh, as it was handed to me. If you don't remember, I just basically added the initial password as password, so I didn't have to touch the terminal again. Uh, and we actually left the password as secure as it is as password. And the reason we have a secondary user is because um, it doesn't have sudo access because you really maybe don't need sudo access, which is why uh, it's still on there. And I'm going to go ahead and get back in there soon. Um, so the Mac one is what I was like playing with and getting everything installed. Like I have home uh, home manager, home manager in there, uh, which was the next thing we got going home manager and multiple users. So. I have made the dot .files folder that uh, you could find more about on Will T's channel, which I have linked in the description finally of this stream. Um, but basically, it was in the home directory. There's a dot .files folder uh, dot like period dot .files is what it was called, and then slash and there there is a um, system a users folder, and then in the users folder there's a, a folder called Mac. That's basically just going to come down to like our our git commits are going to be um, stored in that kind of structure. Then we added the Nix channel to install the home manager. We actually used a Nix shell, which I learned more about uh, in the last couple of days. Um, Nix shell just allows you to basically check out a uh, like a program, or uh, in this case, I think an entire what was this? A, a channel? Like it Basically, you open the channel itself in the shell is, is how I think that works now. As that I'm looking at it again with um, you know fresh eyes, is that you open the, the home manager channel 
as a package in Nix shell, and then you run the install package out of it, and it finds all the things that it needs as, as far as I'm aware is how that works. Um, the, the bad thing is, like, I'm super new to this whole environment, so, like, I'm looking probably to be wrong about a lot of things just so we're all on the same page. Um, I'm looking for corrections. If possible, we're all in this together, learning about NixOS, which is sweet. Um, but yeah, we I, I uh, kind of messed around for like 15 whole minutes uh, trying to get Home Manager installed, and like there was no there was no problem. There was not a typo. I mean, yeah, I, I called it um, called it Home I called it Home Channel, like like it was a Wii or something. I called it Home Channel, um, and then I corrected that, and there was not an actual other typo. I literally had to like reboot. The system, um, and I think it's maybe because I, I updated a configuration file that ended up being wrong, and I removed it. Updated. Anyway, I re I rebooted and it worked just fine, like it should have the first time, 15 minutes earlier. But it that's fine. Um, for the main topic though, the main topic. So I have all these things over here. Um. Uh, I think we want this one. Oops, I messed up that page. Bummer. I have some custom CSS on that page that I think I just messed up because I can't can't seem to get it to save. Oh well, we'll see. Um, so this page right here is really well written. It's like written as like a conversation in parts, but it's also written as a tutorial where it needs to be. Um, this person really knows a lot about Nix. And they come they they've come back to update like if there's been uh changes since it's such an unstable uh situation with flakes. They know a lot about flakes. So I haven't actually gone through a, a whole lot of this second page, but I've gone through the first article and the third article um it has just come out like a week or two ago, a week ago, something like that. So definitely worth checking out. It uh, turns out, like, the best Nix resources are not on the wiki, uh, unfortunately. Uh, the wikis probably need to be linking out to these things. Yeah, but for now, like, this is the best we got, uh, is to come in here and, um, yeah, I, I've, I've kind of gathered, gathered some resources for podcasts over, like, I think, I, I don't, I don't think I've gone back too far. I've, I've looked for... I specifically typed the word uh, NixOS into the podcast search thing that I have, and it gave me like three or four random podcast episodes from across the board that I've gathered um, a little bit of information from, like history of. Uh, I do want to shout them out if I can remember them. The Linux User Space podcast had an episode. The Stack Overflow podcast had an episode. And the oh, the good one. Oh, I have to find that one. Oh, because it, I've I've named the two that were pretty good, but there was like an actually really good one uh, that went through like the whole history of NixOS and everything about um like it's <clears throat> like a big overview of it. Um, it must have been the change log, I believe. It was either the changelog itself, um, changelog software development open source podcast, or Linux user space podcast. One of those two had a really, really good, uh, uh, really good podcast episode on NixOS. And one of them did a, um, they both did a, quite a very good episode, but one of them did a full like history from um, the time it was like a research project until now. Uh, so it's like, well, I guess maybe 2017 or 18 or 19 was whenever it was released. But anyway, um, I'm just really, really stoked on this. Uh, April is a is the the uh, time to get into NixOS apparently because of Jupiter Broadcasting's challenge. Uh, once again, the uh, Jupiter Broadcasting uh, challenge was to just install 
NixOS on a uh, with a desktop environment and to run HTOP and then take a picture of that and send it in. But I, I kind of want my end result here to be uh, I want it to really I want I want to be like a reproducible environment that can just run HTOP. Right? I want it to be that. Like so that's where I'm getting at with flakes right now. And I keep saying the word flake and everyone's probably like, what the heck is a flake? And I thought for so long that I would never I would never understand it. I was like, what is a flake? Um So let me break it down. Christine, the, the, the website there, christine.website slash blog is where we were just looking at. Um, breaks it down. Nix is a package manager that lets you have a more deterministic view of your software dependencies and build processes. Nix flakes define a set of conventions for how software can be built, run, integrated, and deployed without having to rely on external tools such as Niv or Lori to help you do basic tasks in a timely manner. So I do want to pull up Niv. I don't have that one saved here. Let's see if I can pull that one up real quick. NixOS Niv. So this is pretty cool. Painless dependency management for NixOS. Um, as far as I can tell, it basically is uh, just handling dependencies, kind of like a like a JavaScript, uh, like like Node would or something, like, or like npm would for Node, something like that. As far as I'm aware, that's how that's what what that means. But um, flakes are built in to Nix and they they let you like to, to they let you package software like re in a reprodu reproducible manager like pin a version of a specific software stack for example and then package that up so you can deploy it on a another desktop or another server um but m even more so you can package up environment variables uh, so you can actually repackage the inf entire operating system, as far as I'm aware, um, and then redistribute that as uh, your downloadable um, in like just one click install. As far as I'm aware, uh, I haven't made a flake. That's what I'm here to do. I'm like here to like, kind of go through some examples and see if I can make a flake run. Um, but right now my my markdown's not working, so might have a problem. I can't get that to work. Okay, it's back. So, uh, flakes uh, add project templates to Nix. They define a standard way to say, this is a program you can run. And they give you a consolidated development environment um, that you can set pr uh, project configurations into. So, if you have multiple development environments, say you're working on like Laravel PHP, um, and you're working on like uh, like some some Docker stuff, and you're also working on um, Kubernetes or something wild, or Arduino. You know, there's a number of things that like you can be working on every once in a while, right? Like you have oh a weekend project coming up, right? Oh, I need to boot up that thing, and then you boot it up, and it hasn't been but four weeks, and you've missed like only two updates, but for some reason it broke something, and now you're instead of doing your project, you're troubleshooting for six hours, and you're like, "Well, sun's down. I guess I'll call it a day, right?" Uh, so instead of instead of ever having to worry about that, like you, you boot up the system and it, and it runs uh, the the environment. Um, that's like a, that's what it means to be like like reproducible, right? Um, flakes can pull in dependencies from Git repos. That's like the biggest thing here is that like Git repos have like become like an actual repository somehow uh, because of the way they this works like they, they either pull from a binary cache uh, like sorry nix the package manager either pulls from a binary cache of the uh, of the package you're searching for 
or if you need specifics, um, it'll pull from this Git repo typically, and it'll just build stuff. It's really cool how it works. Um, it can work with people that don't like to use flakes as well. So, like, um, as far as I'm aware, you like you can just strip out the the flake parts, right? Like you can, you, like you can package something in a way that like if a person doesn't have experimental flakes, it can like um, backport uh, changes into like just regular nicks and it can make stuff run for that for them as far as I'm aware. Um, let's see. They, it, uh, Flakes do have support for private Git repos, so that's good if you're using private GitHub repos for your company or for yourself. Um, it will allow you to define system configurations alongside your applications. Uh, so as far as I'm using this, I don't think that's how that applies to me, but it, you can. So like you can, like I said, you can encompass your whole, your whole system with just one Flake. Uh, that's kind of how Will T shows off how to do it. Um, let's see. So yeah, I don't really use Docker, but a lot of people I know a lot of people do use Docker. Uh, something that may also help you understand why flakes matter is that Nix by itself is more akin to Docker files. Docker files help you build the software, but they don't really help you run or operate the software. So Nix Flakes is more akin to a Docker Compose command. They help you compose packages written in Nix to run across multiple machines. So that's more of like a, a comparative uh, understanding of how Nix Flakes are supposed to work. They give you the tools to reproduce um, your environment rather than, you know, give you, uh, like help you operate it. And we can finally probably just go ahead and make one. Before I make uh, a, a flake, though, I am going to take just like a two-minute break here. I gotta clear my throat. It's kind of kind of froggy. Be just a second here. We're gonna run back to this screen and be right back. All right, not bad, not bad. Coming right back to it here. So, let me minimize that. Where's my notes? Somehow I, I look away for two seconds and everything is in chaos. All right, we made it. So let's go ahead and make a flake. Make a flake. Um, so I think it's just got. I think it's just called a flake. Dot nix. You make. Um, probably should have wrote that down. Since I'm making all kinds of stuff. Uh, and I'm writing stuff, not writing stuff down. <laughs> I'm, uh, I have all these notes and I didn't write some, some 
important stuff down apparently. So I think it's just flake.nix is what we need. But first off, let's go into our system configuration first. Let's see, uh, Nix OS configuration, oops. Configuration Nix, trusty password. All right, and in here we need to find package. And is there no? It, uh, anyway, <laughs> it can probably go anywhere in here. I just like to put it where other people put it when they're telling me where to put stuff. I think it's okay. Well, we can always check here, right? I have, that's why I have this stuff here. Is whenever it comes to flake installations, flakes, inputs, installing flakes. Here we go. So yeah, that's that's kind of what I thought, but I didn't know that I would really need the Nix equals maybe. Maybe it's because it's a kind of an import of its own self. Hmm. So that means it would go to the top level, huh? I don't think that's true. I think I'm reading that wrong. I think my my uh, what's happening? Oh no! I'm stuck in them. Oh no! But seriously, what is it? What is it actually? Okay, <laughs> we got there. I'm gonna make it look like that, cause like that's that's what's tripping me up about this. So I do want me to just go ahead and do nix equals. Yeah. And extra options equals experimental. Did I spell that right? Features equals Nix command flakes. Okay, so it might seem silly to write all that out, but it um, you should you should write that out. Unless you seriously know what you're doing, you should write that out. Uh, it's important to learn what you're doing. I think that's going to work, honestly. I really think it's going to work. A system-wide installation, or installation as a command, huh? Install as a command. Okay. Cool. Pretty good. Pretty good. Well, now our now our wallpaper is cut off. Unfortunately, my custom CSS is broken forever. There's no fixing it now. So let's just see if that works. Sudo nixos rebuild switch and see what happens. See if it gives us an error. And then it possibly still won't work. Um, the documentation also said that it could need a restart. Um, the nixdaemon.service needs a restart potentially. But we're going to test it first and see. So what we're going to do next, is, there's an example I found um, to create a new flake from a Go template. There is a website that hosts templates. 
I can't remember if I saved it or not. Let's see. Nix Flakes. Just open a couple of these and see. Yeah, flake registries. So you can find this list here. As far as I'm aware, I have no, I really have no idea about this stuff right here. This is where it gets to be a little bit over my head still. Um, but as far as I'm aware, it looks like there's like templates, right? Like, uh, like this, this template that I'm about to get from this person is going to give me a hello world written in Go or something. So, I haven't even tested it. <laughs> it's just, I'm just expecting it to maybe work. So, let's see. Did that looked like it reloaded just fine. Um, let's CD into temp. And can we touch this probably? LSLH. Yeah, probably. We'll find out. It'll be Mictor. TMP. Oh. Uh, why? Well, let's just go back to the regular then. I just realized that it's in the home directory. They, they want me to make a TMP folder for some reason. That's fine. I follow I follow the tutorials so I don't mess up. Uh -huh. make her go demo. CD go demo. Nix flake new dash t templates. Go zero. How the how did I get a zero out of that? Hello. Dot declaring this directory. Cool. So we didn't have to reload our daemon at all. It looked like that worked really quickly. Let's ls here. Cool. We got a flake.lock, flake.nix, a go file, and a go.mod. I'm guessing maybe that's like a setup file. Let's see what that is. Cat. Go.mod. Oh, it's like the version. Okay. Module example.com slash go hello. Using Go 1.6. Cool. So, they want me to get and knit this, but I don't care to do that. I don't think. Do I need to? Maybe? Let's just do that. Um, and then, so the flake.nix should contain a single Go package that is supported on macOS and Linux for 64x86 processors and 64-bit ARM processors. And flake.nix under the default app add dev shell packages for minimal Go environment to show the power of flakes. Okay, so we're gonna show the power of flakes using the Go shell environment, uh, or the dev shell environment. So uh, the shell environment, whoa, big. Big breakthrough, right, with these things. Like, turns out, um, before we do this, I have one thing to show how cool shells are in Nix. Um, let's just leave this where it's at, right? We don't need to, we don't need to exit out. We have a working, functioning desktop where we could just simply switch users and not mess up our flow here. But I am going to go into Nano for one moment here because how cool shells are in NixOS. Oh my goodness. I thought I liked terminals before, but now they're way cooler. Alright. Getting into Nano. He's got the light theme. <clears throat> That's how we know it's Nano. Remember, it builds the environment every time you boot it, so. As far as I'm aware, anyway. Maybe it's restoring it somehow, I don't know. 
It's figuring it out. It's taking a while figuring it out, but it's figuring it out. So, um, I don't have an example. Uh, a great, I don't have a, like, a great example, right? But um, Nano doesn't have H top. But if I uh, simply run, if I simply run a Nix shell tech P in a package name, it just gives me a new shell with a package in it that I can just use in my environment. So Nix uh, shell tech P H top within no time. I'm in a Nick shell and I'm running HTOP. I never typed sudo. Nano doesn't have sudo privileges. Uh, so if I do like sudo HTOP, Nano is not in the sudoers file, right? In uh, Ubuntu, you couldn't install a package uh, without, without root access. Um, without being able to elevate to the sudo user, right? The, uh, to being in the sudo's file, right? Sudoers file. So, or in any, I, I don't need to call out Ubuntu, Fedora, you know, open source, where you at on this, right? Uh, Arch, Mahomes, like none of them, none of them allow you to install a package and then simply like, oh, exit that shell and then htop doesn't exist anymore. Like what? Oh, I built a shell that had just HTOP in it, right? But like now that it's on the it's on the thing, right? It's not, it's in the it's in the next store, uh, so it just can pull that uh, where it knows it's at, and like now I can just use HTOP anytime. Um, if I if I call it from a terminal like that, whereas like the the environment had HTOP, so it didn't need to fetch it. And now if I needed, um, let's just see if it will fetch uh, Nix shell pffmpeg. Let's see if it needs to grab anything for that. Probably doesn't. No. Um, I bet it does for like YouTube DL. Might not be a great thing to grab. Mm. How about Nginx? Why would you grab Nginx for Nix shell though? Probably wouldn't. But FFmpeg you would, so FFmpeg I some mp4 to some mp3, right? You would try doing something like that. And um, you would only maybe need that every once in a while. So instead of like maybe you'd have like a specific some kind of like that would have a built-in ffmpeg overlay right that's kind of the idea that maybe that would that would take on down the road uh for for myself really what it comes down to is having uh, different av availability of interfaces to to go towards um when it comes to web development or when it comes to uh like python interpreting uh that kind of stuff like you there's different kinds of repls out there and to be able to to easily contain their variables without with you know, you know without uh muddying up an entire system with six different dev environments which you which you can do right you can intricately weave together a system that operates very well very very well but this makes it way easier to uh, to separate the ideas um, that you want to achieve on a whim, right? When you when you sit down to your computer, you want to get work done. And sometimes with Linux, unfortunately, and to its benefit, we're all tinkerers, right? Um, but also to its detriment, we want to get work done. Um, and it can and it can sometimes t uh, it can sometimes take us uh, a little too long to get to the work that we want to do because we're doing too much work to get to the work. Now let's switch to this session. That's interesting. I didn't realize what was happening there. So I could start a whole new session of Mac. Okay. Too many S's in password.
Okay, so we're right back to where we stopped. Um, this is for good reason, because we're about to do something that is a little bit based on that little shell process we just did with Nano. Um, Nano the user. I keep saying Nano as in the user and not the program, which everybody knows it by. We're going to go into the flake. Uh, what is it called? Uh, flake.mix. Jim into that. Flake.nix. And in here, does it have dev shell? No. It does not. So we need to add it. In the flake.nix, under the default app, add dev shell. So where is the default app? D, D, not def, default app. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, uh, let's see, I think it's something different now. Default, if I could spell. Default package, here it is, P default package. So, yeah, this is where it wants us to put this thing. This thing's going right here. Okay, let's try it. So dev shell equals for all systems. System. Nick's expressions are so strange. They're unlike any programming language. I guess they're more akin to Haskell, which it's been a long time since I've read uh, Learn You a Haskell for greater good or whatever it's called. It's been a minute. Uh, maybe six years since I've read that book and it's I haven't used any of it, so whew, rusty. Let PKGS equals Nix PKGS for system. In PKGS make shell. I think we want that. No, we do not want that. Want to snuggle that right up against this closing bracket, I do believe. Put it there. Vim, you're too good to me. I'm not expecting it. Build inputs equals with PKGS. Go. Go, please. Go imports. Go tools. I've never used Go once. Go is a cool language. I have read a little bit about it. It is as much as I know about it as I've read. Um, apparently, it's very useful. That's, that's, that's my review on Go from afar. Useful language. So, Nick's build? Huh. Look at that. Let's watch this happen. I think it's putting all those in the environment. Let's put some music on.
that would happen. I get I go through all the trouble of switching scenes, put the timer on, putting the music on, and it goes ahead and finishes up. Sometimes you can't anticipate how long it's going to take to get stuff done. But you know, it's real nice to be able to switch between scenes like this. Right back into it. Oh yeah. Stuff back in order. Takes... See, this is why we need tiling window managers. Come on, Windows. The game. Oh, I cannot wait to actually get my hands on Xmonad. It is part of this project. For sure. Okay, so one B next command. We're running this thing. I'm a flick. Should just be in dot result. Bin and go. How do we run this? Is it just, just run it dot slash old school binary? Cool. It runs as dot uh, dot uh, slash go dash hello. So it's just a binary. Cool binary build. Huh. And now if we go to Nix develop. Is it going to do it again? How much? Oh, let's play music. Play music every time. Ah. So it's so Let's just play some music. Let's play it. Let's play it a little low. It's just so good to play music for a while. Just so good to play music on and off. Uh, by the way, this is a uh, old school on all sides. Uh, this is some on all sides uh, from our instrumentals from back before we had a drummer. So I heard it here only. Unreleased B sides. Which we will uh, we'll bring out one day. Not today. But you can hear it now. Here. And now. I'm so excited about this. I hope you guys are as excited about this. So, to be able to do stuff, uh, Go version. Is that right? Yeah, we have Go in here. I wish I knew how to do anything in Go. Oh, man. How do I... And that's so cool. We have like we have go in here. Suddenly. Oh man. Um let's see if I can figure out how to use go at all. What's in here? Mangit.go. Oh yeah. Let's just write another one. I don't even know how, but let's just do this. Uh I appreciate Nix OS. <laughs> and then how do we build this? How do we change this now? You can't just... What did I do before? What did I do before? How did I do that? Um, it was Nick's build. Sometimes you just can't remember this stuff. You just did. Let's see if it. Let's see if it changes it this time. Uh. Because if that's as easy as Go is, right, and it just builds you a binary every time, holy cow, Go could be really cool. Alright, now let's print that. And 
Sachen. Ein bisschen. Always ls for some reason, but dot slash. Oh! Hey! Whoa! So go is good, huh? What's up, Jesse? Welcome to the stream! Everybody, Jesse's here. I'm gonna hop into the, the, the camera view. I don't know which side you're on. <laughs> You tried. You got there. Jesse also appreciates NixOS. Um, I don't want to speak too soon, but he's he's working on a little bit of a of a, of a musical piece, I think, for it. We'll, we'll see how that pans out. I don't want to speak too soon, but a little tease. He was shaking his head back there. He's not back there. Not. You can't really see him. It's all right. He's he's out of the frame. He wants to be out of the frame. So, um, let me see, let me, uh, let me find something that's cool and go real quick. I'm very excited about how this works. Let's, do we, do we stop playing music? Is music, yeah, music's still playing good. I should put my headphones on so I can listen to the music too, which means, um, uh, we'll, uh, Check this out real quick. Uh, Go lang examples. We need the language. We need the language. So, here we go. We need, like, writing web applications. <laughs> we need to get deep fast. Hmm, okay. Oh, 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 oh. Okay. Hey, Go is really cool. I think you could build a lot of stuff in Go. Whoa. What is this used for? What is Go for? It's cool, huh? Net HTTP package. Uh, is this better than Python? Why? I don't want to get lost in the weeds here. We are um, able to do stuff in Go that um, that I was excited about, but then I realized that Go might potentially be like a cool programming language to dive into for a while. I don't know that I want to do that right now. I'm going to restart that music though because we're into it right now. I'm, uh, I'm going to change this up again. Here. This is just so cool. Let's do one last line. Uh, how do you do variables? Like, why didn't it tell us that? Go basics language. Oh, don't tell me the tutorial. This is silly tutorial. That's a silly tutorial. Tutorial's point. Give me just um, the basics. The basics. See, they want you to write like they're talking. So is is Go simply like command line stuff? Is that what it is? Because I'm I'm looking for like variables. I'm looking like a plus b plus. B. I don't see that here. I'm gonna move along from Go because I don't know enough about it, and I'm suddenly realizing that. So. uh... Basically, 
the the point that I got to in Flakes is is where I want to use this kind of a setup to go on to create um, a like a nginx profile, basically something that I can use to to migrate between uh, like web hosts if I want to. If I want to take everything that I'm currently running on on one uh, system, I want to be able to move it to another system, right, in the future. And so to do that, it's, it comes down to like Nginx um, and very little actual desktop stuff. So all my desktop stuff is uh, basically stored on like a home directory structure. So I don't have to worry about it. It's, it's not, if the system goes away, the, the home directory is still there. Fine. So whenever it comes to um, but like the, like the server stuff, like I keep having to like, okay, this Nginx build is going to move here, so I might as well just like reinstall on like a new box, you know, build it here and like reconfigure it and get it all up and running in a different way, just slightly, but just a little bit better every time. Uh, and then this way, that you can just tack on to the, uh, the configuration and uh, build generations to come uh, of, of your uh, desired uh, output. So for myself, it's this, like right now I'm pushing to a RTMP server. Um, it's like, that's all I'm doing, right? I host uh, Nginx server on DigitalOcean, and all it does is capture this stream and broadcast it to three other sources. Used to be like four or five whenever Mixer and uh, Steam were around, but now Steam doesn't really do that or something. And then Mixer is gone forever, so now I'm just pushing to a couple sources. But you can always add more sources, like to the RTMP module in Nginx. And like I hate setting that back up if. I move to um, a different location, right? I mean, yeah, it's easy enough just to download the, the nginx.conf file and then SFTP it back up to the next server. Easy. But that's not what like, I actually want to do manually every time. And also, I don't want to host those secrets in a public repo. So I think... NixOS is like with the with like the, the GPG, the Git uh, crypt stuff that I'm hoping to touch next time. Whenever I take this Nix Flake idea and like apply it to my desired like desktop setup with Home Manager and everything included, uh, that hopefully the next time. Uh, I, I can really get closer to taking uh, <laughs> this set, set up and pushing it to GitHub. I'm kind of currently worried about that that kind of that kind of thing. So I might. Uh, that's what I was trying to do with GitLab, right? So I'm, I might do it off screen just to be safe, but we'll see how it goes whenever I get there and um, yeah, see what th see what I think about it whenever I come back on screen but yeah, I'm hoping to be able to take this and do it all on stream this Nix this Nix OS process but if, it, if I have to put my credentials out there in plain text like I'm just simply not about to at very least I'll make a dummy account right that's the best I could do. But we will see on that next time. Um, this has been kind of a meandering look at flakes. This is not the best look at flakes that you could get on the internet. I um, I do want to point you in the best places that I've I've seen so far. Um, the NixOS wiki is not typically the best place, unfortunately. There's some good stuff on there. Uh, let's go ahead and close some news to the right. Cashix. Before I go, Cashix. Okay, so whenever you do start getting into flakes, like I'm about to, this is um, this is super important stuff. 
So the way Nyx works, like I set up front, uh, is either it can pull just the straight binary uh, and like give it to you like the FFmpeg binary, right? Just pull it down straight as it is, latest version. Or if you needed FFmpeg with all these build flags and like all this stuff, all this runtime stuff, then it would build it using the source, uh, the source, uh, whatever, the source build of it. And so NixOS can handle that, that build, right? So whenever you start packaging your own flakes, you can also cache your own binaries of those flakes, as far as I'm aware of, with, with cachex. So you, you, your, uh, your derivations are not as, um, as huge as they would be, right? You're not, you're not pulling down the entirety of everything that you declared that you needed whenever your system already has it, right? It's like, oh, well, it's the system already that, that, that we're on already has it, or the, the, um, the cache of this flake, the hash of this flake, you know, cache in our system has this binary attached and the derivation doesn't call for anything that's uh, dependent on it. So it's just going to send you the binary um, rather than the full source of your Git repository. As far as I'm aware, that's how the cache works. So you have to set this up with your GitHub um, authenticator or something. If you're using GitHub, you have other uh, things to help you um, get pushing binaries. They have all these kinds of things, authentication, let's see. Um, yeah, so they, they just want you to give it basically an auth token. You can probably get that from any of your SVNs, whatever it is, your, your SVN or your Gits, whatever they are, Bitbuckets, whatever they are. I have no idea what people use these days. I haven't been in the developer space for like three years or something. Um, so that's good. That's very good. Cashix is something that, like, oh my goodness, it was just yet another thing on top of this massive mountain of a system. Um, how to use them? Let's see what this is. Oh yes, 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 yes. Once again, once again, if you get anything out of this, um, go to christine.website/blog. That's the only place that, like, you can get a full breakdown and like a story. To go along with it, uh, Will T on YouTube, his link is in the description of this video, um, is also like the like the best resource on YouTube that I've come across to, for just getting this stuff up and running. Um, let's continue on. Let's see who else we got here, or what else we got. Here that is Nix. That's her. Uh, flight templates. This is a person that I think that person pointed out to. Uh, Christine.website pointed out to this uh, peppers slash post. It's uh, p e p p e dot r s slash post uh, posts. So I think it's like a WordPress website or something. But basically, um, it's kind of like how to use flake uh, flake templates and like. This is probably going to be the the next big deal for me. These templates, like, I don't, I don't know what, I don't know exactly what I'm doing yet. But like, just being able to see, like, you can put latex something or other, and then rust something or other. Uh, it seems like you can build two separate environments next to each other at least. So. We will see how that works. There's two templates underneath one home template. Did you do? Oh, I was like you sprayed like a balloon or something. You're good. <laughs> this boy. Oh man. So we've just been chatting and chatting. Uh, so yeah, ch check that out. Uh, peppers. Pepe dot rs. Um, novice Nix, what's this? That's the what I just did. Okay, X Monad. Oh my goodness! So X Monad is a tiling window manager. So I'm gonna definitely install this by the end of the month. Uh, super easy to install. 
very hard to configure, apparently. So, uh, like, just going through and making sure that everything is as you want it, and then your key bindings are set as you want it, that's, like, the whole purpose of it. And uh, as far as I'm aware, you can have, like, floating... To, like floating windows maybe so like if I want my chrome window to be floating a little bit it'd be cool or um you know my my uh I guess it would really just be chrome that I maybe would want floating maybe not even that who needs a floating window when you got tiled windows right so let's see next uh oh yeah vim is like fully configured you can see vim has got the airline thing uh, let's one last time just look at that. Uh, forget about this. Bam. Etsy. NixOS. Configuration Nix. Let's go down to the bottom here. So, um... Did I put that in home? I think I did. So, in Vim dot config is that it nix packages home nix yes so vim okay so in our vim uh program so home uh so you can see here at the bottom of the screen it says dot config slash nix packages slash home dot nix that's the file uh of our home manager um, configuration. So this one file controls everything that has to do with Home Manager. Whenever I log into my my Mac profile, uh, everything here is ran. Um, and so this Vim configuration is so like. Let me tell you, Vim is pretty easy to configure. There's like tools out there to make Vim easy to configure. What's not easy is managing those configurations once you set them in motion, right? So like if you start downloading plugins, and I can't remember the name exactly what I was using for Vim, but um, there's like a program out there that wraps Vim plugins and you can add them to Vim and act, like remove them and stuff, but you're always left with like some kind of mess after you add and remove a plugin that you don't end up using very often. And with this being rebuilt every time and you just simply add the plugins as a line in the code uh, and then you your your config is actually right there alongside it goodness sakes being able to declare what plugins I'm going to use and then also what my vimrc is going to be set to this might be the best system to use vim on at very least like we have to give it to that What's what better like unless you're gonna come up with a Vim OS <laughs> like it's all right there. And it's super reproducible. I've never like I've had VimRC I've like tried to commit my VimRC files to GitHub and then pull them back down and then like edit them some more and push them back up. When you're using multiple machines and you're like, oh I edited this thing, oh I forgot to commit, you know, it's like that. You know, it gets a, it still can be a little bit messy, but like whenever, whenever there's only one file that holds all that, and it's all your machines, maybe, whenever it gets to be more powerful. Uh, and then let's just keep on going here because like I have all these things, we might as well go through them. I don't know when we'll ever get the chance. There's a cheat sheet out there. You guys are probably find that. This admin pocket survival guide for NixOS. This is how um, you might uh, compare all kinds of commands from like Debian or Fedora uh, and be able to, to do the same things. It's kind of cut off uh, because it's an old kind of website, but how you might be able to do the same things in Nix uh, rather easily. Um, these are just commands in the Man pages, nixos.org. Um, there is a nixos REPL. So you can just get into a nix REPL and start like messing with nix expressions, like the expression language itself. 
And you can actually do a lot in there. I haven't played with that very much. Uh, and then Home Manager has its own thing in the nix-community.github.io. Uh, that's how I was able to install that. I watched a video and it just maybe seemed a little out of date, but uh, this seemed to work. Uh, and then Flakes are actually a part of the nixos.wiki as well. There's so little information on that wiki page, though. If you want to know anything about Flakes, oh my goodness, look anywhere else on the internet right now. Um, everybody who knows a thing or two about Flakes should add it to that wiki as soon as possible, please. Because I couldn't find a dang thing about, like, some of, some of the descriptions I found about what Flakes even are. Um... Some of the best descriptions about what Flex even are came from totally outside the scope of any Wikipedia article, right? Like these are just blog entries on a website, on a personal website. Um, probably weren't running like an old version of WordPress, but like a new version of Nix. <laughs> so like, um, I don't, I honestly, I'm not, I'm not harking on anybody, but like, we got to get the documentation together on this on this operating system because it's seriously good. Um, it is hard, hard, hardcore to use. Um, people don't understand code, and they're certainly not going to understand um, this, right? Like, we we got to we got to maybe build UIs over this. When you're presented with a, a disk image that simply has G parted on it, and nothing that says install anywhere. It's kind of hard. Um, I can I can imagine with Go especially, like Go seems like the perfect uh, language right now. Just like reading those few lines of documentation seems like the perfect language to just build like a configuration, um, like configurator, like a, a configuration file configurator, right? Configuration.nix configurator. Um, select this box, select that box, select this box, type in your name, do this, that, that, that give you this gigantic list of everything that Nix can do right out of the box. Let you go through tab after tab, after box after box, after pop-up box, after dialogue choices, after menu option, after... Imagine the configuration potential of Nix OS if you gave it just a single UI that is as powerful as the single file that is the configuration.nix file. Just a singular UI that is as powerful as that configuration.nix file. And this is what DevOps would turn to, right? Like suddenly you're doing you're doing large scale CI at the operating system level. Like somehow with with this kind of stuff. Maybe I'm maybe I'm too pie in the sky about it. Maybe I'm just still in the honeymoon phase with it. But like seriously, like the the options are all right there. We we know like they're they're almost baked in to the to the system. The system just knows how to handle the things we throw at it. The, to to echo that in a UI, right? That has the options that you don't have to go hunt for. That you just have to select and call what it is, check boxes and open tabs and click radial buttons and stuff. That's where the power will come in to to, to the user's hands with NixOS. Uh, right now, um, flakes are too experimental to ever get to that stage. Hopefully, um, I'm coming in at the right time for NixOS. I, 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 I do know enough now about NixOS's history to realize that it's still so super young, right? It's, uh, even though it came out in like 2001 or whatever, NixOS uh, itself came out in like 2007 or whatever. It's still like 14 years in. You know, Debian's had seven years on it or something, you know, maybe even more. I think Ubuntu's have had like seven years on it, and then Debian's had like 17 years on it or something wild. So like, you know, BST has been around so much longer, and they haven't matured as much as I could see uh, NixOS maturing. Maybe it's just because I know um, how powerful the, uh, the system is, but I don't know its pitfalls yet, right? Maybe that's where I'm at with it. Uh, but I really, I really see uh, like a UI and like an installer that gives you just unlimited powers 
in the future for Nyx uh, right out of the box. Boom. Here's everything Linux is capable of right out of the box. Click it and it will work every time. It's reproducible. Just sign in to whatever uh, like repositories set up you want and it, it works. And download it on all your systems. That's um, super powerful. Uh, and until until I figure out what I'm doing next, um, I'm gonna I'm gonna bank on uh, this in some way. I'm gonna bank on um, getting. So next time we're gonna do GitHub. Somehow, some way, I'm gonna get GitHub going. I'm gonna make a uh, Nix flake out of this uh, this system right now, and we're going to uh, install it on my laptop. That's what we're gonna do. Because at this point, it's uh, I've gotten to, I've gotten everything I everything I've wanted out of this challenge and more, and I think I've uh, I figured out at, at very least how to how 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 I want to approach like a development environment going forward. This is just brain dead simple. This is the way to approach like a sep like a like a separated development environment setup. And um, I really appreciate uh, everybody who who is stopping by. There's a lot of um, you know people out there who who are are who are tuning into the videos and enjoying the content, um, and who are probably also checking out NixOS for themselves right now for, through the, throughout this challenge. And if you want to leave a comment uh, correcting me or telling me your experience, that's awesome. I really appreciate all the stories that I've heard through um, through Jupiter Broadcasting, through uh, the different podcasts that I've heard. Um, you know, everybody's got a story to tell about this wild system. Like, <laughs> you know, how to compare it to things and how big of a paradigm shift it is. You know, it's it's only natural that we keep talking about it in this way uh it really changes some things so i am finally going to leave it at that i know we didn't do a whole lot um but we did explore flakes a little bit and so now let's just one last time if we go back into tmp and we do what was it nix build right um no it was uh what was it nix Um, what was that? Is it result? TMP result. Where was it? Go demo. CD go demo. Oh, this is where I want to build it. Okay, yeah. Next build. So I've got next build and then do the result. Appreciate Nix OS. I wanted to leave with that little message because where I stand with Nix OS is that I really do appreciate what it's doing. Um, there's not enough functional programming out there, and it seems like everybody who is who who is a functional programmer um, might be working on this <laughs> secretly. Um, because like, you know, that, that whole community really doesn't have a whole lot of, um, spotlight a lot of times. There's a lot, there's like a lot of cool stuff happening in, uh, JavaScript, right? That's what you hear about Node and this stuff. Um, cloud, right? But Haskell's really cool. And this might be the best development platform for Haskell because of how easily declared it is. And, and then Xmonad seems to just run right out of the box on this as well. So, like, I'm going to get Xmonad running and a Haskell environment running um, on NixOS, and I'm really excited about that and get my feet wet in uh, Haskell for the first time in six years. So, there's so much good here. So much good. Jump in. <laughs> you're going you're, you're gonna to regret it at first. Water's super cold. But it's actually like once you get used to it, it's like really nice. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> All right. That's enough of my rambling. I'll see you next time. Peace out. You know, videos don't have to... I, I'm being awkward, but... Yeah. Okay. You're gonna want to get this on camera.